Hello everybody, Greg Richard here, Rapper's Digest. Today we're putting words to voices. There's a lot of heat that we take often in the comments section, a lot of agreement, a lot of discord that happens, and it's really interesting to hear what everybody's opinion is, especially now that this is one of the most lively trade deadline periods in perhaps Raptors history. We have a player that's perhaps just a rental. We have a number two player just voted in as a fifth time all-star in Kyle Lowry that there's really, it's up in the air what should be done with him. And there's a lot of back and forth discussion, but it's all going down in two days, whether or not the Raptors go all in and try to swing for the fences with Anthony Davis or they work out a deal with the Memphis Grizzlies and pull in Mike Conley and Marc Gasol, or if something completely different is under the works. We're talking today to everybody that keeps this channel running, and we're going to get a couple of voices on the podcast and basically hear what you guys have to say. All right, so first uh, first guy on the line here, how about you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Jasper. I'm from Berlin. All right, uh, Berlin. Germany. Crazy, man. So uh, how did you even pick up the Raptors Digest in the, in the first place? I mean, I'm a huge Raptors diehard, um, and I just I, I think I just got it from a recommended tab on YouTube. I just saw the Raptors Blockbuster Trades, which I think is your most popular video, right? And ever since then, I just, I don't know, I like your guys' personality, and been following the pod ever since, yeah. All right, love That's to hear it. One of the games that I watch. Love to hear it. All right, this is arguably... The biggest time now for the Raptors, perhaps in history, with the trade deadline approaching this Thursday, there's a lot of big names in circulation. Of course, there's the prospect of the biggest fish, Anthony Davis, Um, you know, other different markets like the Marcus Gasol and Mike Conley. We just heard news today about that potential trade. Um, But then there's also the big looming X factor about um, Kawhi Leonard. And if no moves are made, what will be the outcome this season? Will he stay? What will it require? You know, what kind of success will need to happen in the postseason to make that deal as tempting as possible to land him in a bigger contract? Um, what's your opinion, man? What the floor is yours? Whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think first of all to keep Kawhi for us, it's finals or bust. I think we need to do everything first of all in this season to to reach the finals, and I think Masai is going to make all the proper moves to yeah until the trade line to get us there and to get us to the finals to convince Kawhi. To stay. But right. obviously, the worst case scenario for us would be if if Kawhi leaves in the in free agency and decides to join, I don't know, the Clippers, maybe even the Lakers, then that's obviously the absolute worst case scenario for the Raptors. And uh, then we'd have to see how we go on moving forward. If we can maybe sign a free agent, like, I don't know, who's an unrestricted free agent, the Clay or Kemba, um, then. Wait, sorry, one second. Sure. Uh, sorry. Yep. Um, if uh, yeah, if we trade for a free agent, like uh, if we get a free agent like uh, Kemba or Clay or anyone like that, which I think is kind of unlikely because with just Kyle Lowry being there and some young assets, we're not really a desirable team to join. I feel like I think we'd have to um, trade Kyle Lowry and trade all of our older assets like Serge Ibaka, maybe a big con- contract that we could trade, uh, trade them for picks and build around our young players, right? Yeah, now we have two two issues that you're bringing up here. So one, you know, you're saying if no moves are made, obviously it's ideal that something happens before the trade deadline. If no moves are made and we lose Kawhi Leonard, then we're looking into the free agency. And it, really, you're right. You hit the nail on the head there. Um, it's not necessarily a desirable market, especially with no big name players to draw in players because really the free agency is player's option, right? Player and agent. And what we're seeing now is that not only during free agency where players, uh, you know, have the ability to command what team they want to play for, especially these high caliber players that are being convinced by every team. Now, At any given time throughout the season, even when they're locked in on contract, what the whole uh, LeBron James movement now with Anthony Davis, obviously both sharing the same agent and Rich Paul, they're being able to demand what team they want to to go to in the middle of a season, right? So it's going to be extremely difficult, like you said, to land a player like Clay. So what do you reasonably... with with all the very, very attractive teams 
like the Knicks and the Lakers, the Clippers having many max max slots open. You know? Yeah, well, there's criticism on uh, on the Knicks' behalf uh, with the way that they got rid of Kristaps Porzingis. But if you think about the cap space that they open, they have the ability to sign to two max contract players, and they're a desirable market. There's been plenty of players, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, that have expressed desire to play with that franchise, regardless if there's any other centerpiece there. So, what do you want to see the Raptors do? Before our time runs out, we still got another three or four minutes here, but what what do you want in an ideal situation? What do you want to happen? Right? What would you like to see? If any if if you know the the most unexpected thing could happen, what would it be? And then maybe dial it back realistically, what do you see happening? You mean if Kawhi leaves? No, I mean if let's say you're Masai Ujiri right now. All right? Mm. And yep. whatever you decide to do would come become a reality, right? Within okay, reason, okay. what would you do? Um, I mean, obviously, if we can get Anthony Davis, I would trade pretty much everyone except for. I I don't think they'd accept Kyle Lowry, but I, I would ex- pretty much trade everyone except for Kawhi Leonard, including a Pascal Siakam. Um, like Lakers are doing, I think we I, I would ship most of our team for Anthony Davis because I think it's fine as the best the season. It's we can do whatever we have to to, um, to impressed Kawhi Leonard and I think even if we can just get a huge player of that caliber 25 years old Anthony Davis he's a superstar he's an MVP candidate defense player of the year candidate I think if we can get him we should press all the buttons that we can to get Anthony Davis all right but so then, let's let's bring up on this last point let's bring up on this last point because the Lakers now they're out of discussion with the uh, New Orleans Pelicans for the time being um, all reports are saying that now because the the Lakers have offered up uh, all of their young assets Right, Lonzo Ball, um, yeah, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, uh, Zubac, Rajon Rondo, and two first-round picks. The Pelicans said, no, 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 we need four first-round picks, two second-round picks, and all of those guys plus some. What are the Raptors able to bring that the New York, that or sorry, that the Los Angeles Lakers haven't already offered? Because that is a an incredible ask from the New Orleans Pelicans. They are being extremely greedy. Of course, they have a guy, you know, a, a generational talent um, that they don't need to trade necessarily. But if you're the Toronto Raptors, seeing that they're turning down this kind of offer, is it even worth it to try to match something like that? I mean, if you're asking what can the Raptors bring to the table that the Lakers can't, I think a piece like Pascal Siakam is very, very interesting to the um, New Orleans Pelicans. I think he has the most upside out of all, in my opinion, he has the most upside out of all the Lakers' young players. He has, he's 24, 23 years old. I think he has way more skills that he can develop. Like, if he continues to develop his three-point shot, if he continue, t- continues to develop his mid-range shot, his off-the-dribble shot, I think he has way higher upside than any of the Lakers players currently have. And I think, I don't know if the Pelicans definitely see that, but if they're really asking, I didn't actually know that they were asking for four first-round picks, two second-round picks, you said? Mm-hmm. That's, I don't think that, especially if we have a chance of our superstar player leaving us and maybe that we have to trade away and start rebuilding, I don't think we should trade more than two or one first-round pick for Anthony Davis because then we're mortgaging our entire future That that and we we have an unclear future. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't have a superstar player that's definitely going to stay with us. I think then we should definitely should not trade all of our picks for Anthony Davis, but we should try to trade, I think, young players, but definitely not picks. picks no, I agree players. with that, yeah. Picks is the most risky thing, especially when you're dealing with the prospect of not having any future players to build around. Anthony Davis, you'd have to get rid of all your young assets. Um, it's a tricky situation. It's worth making a bid, like you said, but we're just going to have to wait until Thursday. I'd be more keen to lean towards an option like the Marc Gasol, Mike Conley trade, where you're not having to give up as much. Supposedly, they're interested in also receiving uh, OG Ananobi and a, pl- and a pick. I'd be willing to do that for that type of trade. But Anthony Davis, if we're climbing into the two, three first round picks that has to be offered up in order to get one player back. It's hard to see the absolute value there. But anyways, Jasper, all the way from Germany, man. Thank you so much for calling in. we got to move on to the next uh, caller, but definitely yep. stay in the in the Raptors Digest uh, sphere, man, and uh, hit us up as often as possible with, uh, with all your hot takes, man. Okay. All right, thanks for coming on the line. All right, thanks for having me. Bye. All right, so that was Jasper from Germany. Uh, excited to see that the, or to hear, I guess, that the Raptors Digest has that kind of reach across the globe. Um, love to hear it, man. Share. If you're listening to this podcast, share it to all your friends. The Raptors are global. The NBA is global. Um, his take, basically, he's saying that, uh, you know, something needs to be done because there's the, the, the 
looming concern that perhaps Kawhi Leonard might not stay. And I think all fans of the Raptors are all maybe practical, knowledgeable fans of the NBA that understand what's going on, the current situation here for the Toronto Raptors, is that something needs to be done. A trade needs to be made, or there needs to be some sort of way that can at least confirm that the Raptors have a chance to make a legitimate push in the playoffs. Because if there's a second or third round exit against the likes of Boston or the likes of Philadelphia, the ability to re-sign Kawhi is significantly diminished because this is a market that he never expressed he wanted to play on. And it's probably a situation where he's not, you know, he's not having the ability to, to compete at the highest level. So, um, We'll get the next caller in now and see what they have to say. See if they have any uh, radical trade moves to bring up. One. All right. Got the next caller on the line here. Uh, Bjarne from Manitoba, but also from Germany. So we have another German caller. Uh, how would you introduce yourself real quick? Hey, my name is Bjarne. I am a 16-year-old student. As Rick already said, I'm actually from Germany, but I moved here almost seven years ago now, and I started watching the Raptors back in 2015. Okay. Um, my friends, first of all, brought me closer to it with DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, obviously, being the main stars. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so um, last caller on the line. We're kind of talking about the Raptors. They're in need of basically making something happen now. We're in the most lively free agent, or not free agency, trade deadline, perhaps of Raptors history. Uh, we have the the impending perhaps doom of the Raptors if Kyle or if Kawhi Leonard won't re-sign we have a lot of big targets now that are you know teams are willing to trade that are there is a lot of discussions yeah. going around the league um so basically floor is yours whatever you want to talk about um if you want to talk about trades if you want to talk about Kawhi Leonard if you want to talk about Kyle Lowry whatever's on your mind so as already as you already said we are kind of in need right now of another person to play with Kawhi Leonard. And I actually thought a bit about the question, what if Kawhi Leonard does not come back next season? And we do not get another superstar right now to pair along with him. Should we right away go into rebuild mode, or do we still have pieces that we Masai can make something happen for the Raptors in the next season with Lowry's and Ibaka's contract? Expiring, and I believe Valanciunas is also done after next season, after the 1920 season. Yeah, well, we have a lot of player options. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard player option, Jonas Valanciunas player option, yeah. uh, Delon Wright has no contract next season. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there's not a lot of players that are really locked in. So, what do you think should happen, or what do you think will happen? So, I also believe that Van Vliet signed a two-year deal, so he'd be a free agent in 2020. Uh, First. yep, he, in, no, he'll be, yeah, in 2020-21 season, he'll be a free agent. Yeah, so, I think that if Kawhi Leonard does not decide to come back, we still got, got a lot of young good players in Siakam, Van Vliet. I still think that OG has a lot of potential to be something in this league. His defense is already, he is already a really good defensive player, and... He already had some nice games this season. I think for him it's just a bit of consistency, and he was also riddled with injuries so far this season, so if he can figure that out, I still believe that he can be a great player. And I also wouldn't sleep on on Norm Powell, because ever since he came back from his injury, he has been playing pretty well in most of his games. Yeah. And obviously, Valanciunas, the thing there is, if we decide to give him a new contract, that would mean that we have a center who then is entering his prime, or you can already say that he is in his prime. He's, I believe, 25 or 26 right now. Yep. And, and I think that if Matai can make something happen, then you should try that for one more year. But if you think that you cannot get another big free agent in the free agency, obviously you have guys like Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Clay Thompson, and all of those guys. And there, I already watched a couple of videos on like what happens if why Kevin Durant should come to Raptors. But I personally do not believe that Kevin Durant 
would be wanting to come to Canada. No, but, we yeah, we don't even need to entertain that idea. Realistically, um, any of the big top name free agents, their destination is set. Uh, players are now already demanding when they're already locked in a contract to go to a specific team or yeah, play with specific players. And then you have teams like New York, which Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, they've already expressed they'd be willing to play there. That has the ability to sign two max contract guys. Raptors, even if they lost uh, Kawhi Leonard, um, they probably... We'll, we'll even put it to bed. We're going to say they, they have no ability to attract those guys without another, at least another big piece to come around because, um, yeah, if you're looking at the free agency markets, where do players want to really establish their name? And that's with, you know, a, a historic franchise, not necessarily the Toronto Raptors. So um, let's yeah. assume, let's assume, okay, that uh, Kawhi Leonard doesn't re sign. Let's assume that it's a guarantee that he doesn't re sign. Okay, and let's also assume that Anthony Davis is out of the picture because they just turned down a yeah. whopping deal from the the Los Angeles or the Los Angeles La- yeah. Lakers had to shut down trade conversations with them because they're asking for an absolutely absurd uh, amount of things, yeah. amount of pieces here. Um, is it worth it to go? What do you think needs to, to happen? Okay, is it worth it to now try to leverage what we have this season? Right, maybe see if we can uh, package up Kyle Lowry. Right with this uh, Memphis Grizz- Grizzlies deal, put in OG Ananobi, put in a first round pick, get Mike Conley back and Marcus All. Um, you know, maybe like we had mentioned earlier, a little trade like Jeremy Lin, um, just to try to get a little bit more offensive power or a lot, of, uh, a little bit more offensive playmaking. Or like you said, should we just start a rebuild next season, or should we try to build off of these you know lesser guys and hope that they become something that the Raptors can fight for a, an eighth, a seventh or an eighth round? Because realistically, the the complete rebuild won't really happen. The Raptors have been yeah. good for so long that those picks just won't line up. Not immediately, at least. Yeah, that's the thing. You also have a lot of good players who can you, you can throw into those trades, not just OG. You have guys like Norm, who the way he's been playing could also be a huge trade piece on something like a Jeremy Millen trade for salary reasons. Yeah. And I believe that you, the Raptors just need another guy who can deliver offensive power when maybe DeLon Wright is, is having an off night or Kyle Lowry is not there for whatever reason. He's been struggling with injuries. And also Fred has been up and down this season so far, but he's been getting better, I get the feeling. He's looked more confident recently, but again, Danny. I listened to the Danny Green podcast with Fred this morning, and they said nobody really feels safe around the trade deadline. Maybe right now, this uh, these couple of weeks are just for the reason that nobody is feeling comfortable, especially after what the Raptors did with the Martin Rosen and the Kawhi Leonard trade. But again, I do not believe that. Uh, Personally, I like Mike Conley's game, but I think a healthy Kyle Lowry is better than a healthy Mike Conley. Okay. I'm just... I'm just throwing that out. But there. the issue is, uh, the issue is health, and if that's the you know the caveat of this whole thing is that we don't know that Kyle Lowry is ever going to get back to the health that allows him to yeah. be the player that's deserving of you know being an All Star five times, and uh, it's really difficult, yeah. right? The chemistry is definitely going to be um, tested hard now if no moves are made, uh, with everybody knowing that they're you know their name is on the block and they know which players they're being um you know offered for in return so it's hard but the the one i guess shining star is that if you know nothing happens hopefully they realize that Milwaukee's in the same situation everybody except Giannis is being offered up for uh, Anthony Davis right Boston Celtics yeah. the the Los Angeles Lakers offered up, offered up their entire team the only thing that held them back was two extra first round picks so it's not like yeah. the Toronto Raptors are the is the only team that uh, you know isn't being loyal to their isn't being loyal to the team members um, it's just when you have a guy like Anthony Davis you have to try and do everything that you can to acquire him um, all right we're running down out of time here now. 30 seconds. Um, what's going to happen? Just two, three sentences by Thursday. What What is the Raptors team going to look like? I personally am not sure because I read that the Raptors deal with Gasol and Conley and Lowry and Don Schultz involved did not happen, that they turned that down. So personally, I would think that they might add somebody for offensive firepower maybe. Maybe like a Jeremy Lin, but I personally do not know who they would necessarily give up because they, a, lot, a lot of guys here right now are having either injury struggles or 
just simply have such a high ceiling that I think the Raptors might be a bit reluctant to give them up. But if it means that they get to keep Kawhi Leonard, I think something will definitely happen before Thursday. Yep, absolutely. Oh, Kawhi Leonard's not moving, that's for sure. But it's a big question mark, and uh, we'll just have to see. I'm hoping that a trade will happen, um, but it's you know it's a big question mark right now. So, Bjarni, thank you so much, man, for calling in. We're yeah. switching over to the next caller now, but definitely stay up, uh, you know, stay in touch with the Raptors Digest, and uh, you know, sound off on us anytime you have an opinion. Yeah. All right, sweet man. Okay, bye. Bye. Another caller, just like. I'm sure the entire Raptors community now is thinking uh, that has really more questions than answers or ideas, right? Everybody in a, an ideal world would like to see a player like Anthony Davis landed or, you know, would consider the realm of possibility of what it would look like with Marc Gasol and uh, Mike Conley. Um, but realistically, it's such a mystery now with so many teams in the market. I, Bradley Beal is a player whose name hasn't even been mentioned, so... Um, there's definitely shrouded in a veil of mystery right now as to what's going to happen in the next two days. Uh, maybe the next caller is going to have uh, some more opinions on what and what's going to happen, what the landscape is going to look like. All right, and we're back now. Maybe, maybe the final caller. Uh, didn't realize how long these call-ins go, but of course, the last couple of uh, people that phoned in um, have been expressing that the biggest concern is losing Kawhi Leonard in the offseason and not making any moves this trade deadline to really establish the Raptors in the seasons to come. And that is a very valid concern because basically the be the biggest thing that the Raptors team can do is have a deep playoff run. And without that, uh, it I would hate to say it, but it, it, the odds are probably unlikely um, or at least less likely to re-sign Kawhi Leonard. So, all right, explain who, who you are. Um, What's your name? And then we'll get into this. All right, fantastic. Uh, my name's Evan Sweet, Nova Scotia kid. Love the Raptors, big time fan. Love the podcast. Thanks, 100%. man. 100%. Glad to hear it. All right, um, you have some ideas. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm thinking the Raptors, I think, have to make a trade 100% because if they are going to make the playoffs and get into a championship run, I feel like they need to... 100% make a trade because I think the Bucks right now are ahead of the Raptors and the Celtics are also creeping on their heels. Okay, that's I mean that's that's an issue of contention there as well, but of course the Celtics in a sort of power ranking usually uh, or considered by the popular media do have the leg up on the Raptors. A lot of it depends on the performance of Gordon Hayward, but I would definitely agree that as of right now, the Milwaukee Bucks are a more polished and consistent team. Not to say that they have better potential than the Raptors, um, but I wouldn't put it past them to be able to give the Raptors a heck of a run uh, if they were to match up in the playoffs. So what moves do you think will be made? Uh, what would you like to see happen? I think definitely they're going to need some more shooting. I think everyone sees that. Um, the defense, the versatility really isn't an issue. However, they do get blown by a lot, I must say, being watching every game. They get blown by quite a bit. Um, I like a trade proposal from the Pacers, probably Tyreek Evans and Bojan Bogdanovic, maybe, for Powell, CJ, Wright, and maybe Richardson, just for some money in there. The Raptors might have to put a couple seconds or even a first into it, but I think that could be a plausible deal. Now, why would the Pacers want to accept that? Well, both of... Uh, Evans and Bogdanovich are on expiring contracts, and with Oladipo going down with the last for the year, um, I think questions are going to come up whether they can re-sign one of them, if not both. I feel like it's going to be fifteen to twenty million each of them for next year if they're going to want to do that. Plus Powell, they, they're getting Powell for four years. CJ's here or there with a shot, I know that, but you throw in Delon Wright, who can be put a restricted free agency clause on them. And maybe if they throw in a pick, because they're picked, they can't give one out until 2021, is it? And uh, I think that could be a possible deal. Uh, it's an interesting proposition. I, I don't necessarily agree that Tyreek Evans would be a good pickup now. Um, you'd have to probably back that one up uh, and explain it to a lot of the fans that uh, are pretty harsh sometimes in the comments. We have a guy that's uh, been bounced around the league a little bit. Uh, he's a serviceable player at times, 
um, but certainly not the caliber that I'd be willing to trade away more valuable pieces for. But the issue is, as you said, um, these are guys that the Pacers have been relying on. So only to give away Norman Powell, whose value in a trade right now is questionable at best, right? Because this is assuming that they're watching a 15-game stretch where Norman Powell has been playing fine. That's the most recent 15 games, of course, because they have uh, the majority of his career in ups and downs. And uh, really, if you're not watching him in a contract that's completely undeserved, Plus C.J. Miles, who's been the absolute worst player in the league. And DeLon Wright, whose contract uh, is over at the end of this season as well. So it's a pretty tricky trade to negotiate. Um, The only player that I could see being really valuable coming back would be a player like Bojan Bogdanovic. But um, that's a guy that I don't think the Pacers would would dare get rid of now because he's part of their their young core. So um, if you want to argue that further... For sure, but if not, uh, let's let's hear what else you have. Uh, okay, well, yeah. On the yeah, chopping so block. The only thing that it would be come down to is that they are expiring contracts, and if they don't think that could, that they can resign them next year. No, that's totally fair. But I feel like you're a man that's come prepared with a couple of offers here. So if you're Masai, if you're Masai Ujiri right now, what else are you looking at? Uh, I'm also looking at the Miami Heat and a three-team trade between the Heat, the Hornets, and the Raptors, okay. possibly. C.J. Miles, DeLon Wright, and maybe a second or two going back to Charlotte Mm -hmm. for getting some size and getting some shooting on the perimeter with Marvin Williams, power forward, shoot. Okay. And going the heat way, you've got Powell, OG, and Richardson. You'd probably have to throw in a first-round pick if you're getting back Ellington and also Josh Richardson. Okay. All right, so um, Raptors side, you're saying they're picking up Wayne Ellington – and Josh Richardson, and who else? Marvin Williams. From and the Marvin Williams from the Charlotte Hornets. And then the, okay, and then they're trading away the likes of OG Ananobi. Who else? Powell and Richardson to the Heat. Okay, Powell Plus and Richardson to the pick. Heat. And a first round pick. And who are the Hornets getting? CJ Miles and DeLon Wright, probably a second or two. CJ Miles and DeLon Wright. It's interesting. I mean, the issue here is that Kemba Walker is likely gone, right? He, yeah. This is probably his last season on the Charlotte Hornets, so I could see them perhaps wanting a point guard in return, right? right. Um, and that's where a player like, and this is where a lot of people have been chiming up to say, is it possible to maybe uh, swindle the Charlotte Hornets and offload Kyle Lowry and try to get a guy like Kemba back? Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, is it tempting enough to pick up another point guard that only has a year left to re-sign? Perhaps it is, right? Perhaps it is because no, DeLon Wright, yeah. DeLon Wright is not, he is also a serviceable backup point guard that will eventually, if he continues to improve his game, he hasn't been playing amazing this season, but if he continues to improve his game, he'll be looking for a contract to the tune of what Fred Van Vliet has been offered. Yep. Right? And perhaps if that role is there and the Charlotte Hornets want to take uh, a guy just like um, the Magic when they took Bismack Biombo, right? They saw that he had a decent season and offered him a crazy contract that the Raptors, there was no chance they were ever going to want to match that. Maybe this is something that the Hornets could be looking at as well. Um, in terms of the pieces that they'd be receiving, uh, I, I like it. I mean, I think that uh, Marvin Williams would be a good pickup. Uh, Wayne Ellington is a guy that. Uh, you know, he's been reliable. And then I think the most promising piece in that whole deal would be Josh Richardson, but that's also the piece that, um, you know, Miami Heat would want to to hang on to because they were trying to leverage Josh Richardson and others uh, in a deal for Jimmy Butler back when he was coming off of the Timberwolves trade. So he's a guy that if, you know, that's who they're packaging up um, as one of the key pieces in order to land who at the time... Right, maybe not now that he's been on a, a more diminished role, but now currently, uh, or sorry, at the time on the Minnesota Timberwolves was maybe considered a top ten player in the league. Right, so to accept and return uh, again, it'd be hard to do. But let's not put it past <laughs> Masai Ujiri packaging, packaging up uh, Demar Derozan and Jakob Pertl for Kawhi Leonard, top three probably guy in the league, and Danny Green, uh, an extremely underrated piece. So. Um, there's a possibility that a trade like this, maybe not this, but like this, that could happen where um, it's completely lopsided to the Raptors' uh, benefit. But I certainly agree that something's going to have to be done about the shooting because it's by far too inconsistent. Right. Um, yeah. And we see it in games like the Milwaukee game where they got blown out. Um, 
you know, they need to have the ability to shoot, right? And to keep up in games when they have when they're not able to get a stop, right? So it's sometimes the best defense is a good offense, right? And you just got to go blow for blow, uh, Rocky and Apollo style. So um, we're coming down on time. I, I don't I don't hate the idea of that trade for sure. Uh, if you have one last one that you want to mention, then we got a minute or two. All right, fantastic. Um, the last one. I love this because we're bringing back. Terrence Ross. Oh, God. Oh, no. We're bringing back Terrence because... No, 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 no. He can. Oh, my God. All right, let's hear what it is. Who are we getting rid of for him? We're getting rid of CJ and Alon <laughs> and a couple of seconds. <laughs> not worth it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of... I would not get rid of... Uh, I wouldn't get rid of Malachi Richardson to get back... Uh, Terrence Ross and cash exceptions and a first round pick. I would still hang on to Malachi Richardson over that. Terrence Ross is the absolute plague of the league. Uh, he might be a Raptors uh, record holder in terms of points per game. Or did DeMar overtake him last season? I'm pretty sure DeMar overtake him. Yeah. But he might be the second most point scorer in a game. But DeMar- Terrence Ross. He's he's a forgettable piece. Uh, he's hopefully in another season. Nobody will ever remember that name. Uh, I love that you tossed it out there, but you know what? Perhaps uh, you know. Perhaps in all seriousness, they do need to consider and not not Terrence Ross. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut that down right away. Not Terrence Ross, fair, fair. but perhaps perhaps the Raptors need to consider that. Hey, we're not able to match the likes of what's been offered up for Anthony Davis. Um, if if this Grizzlies trade, I wouldn't mind uh, putting in OG in a pick, right? It, on top of Kyle Lowry and JV to get Mike Conley and Marcus All back. Something needs to happen, right? Something needs to happen. K- Kyle Lowry, whether you like him or you, or you you know love him or you hate him, um, I just don't think that the pieces right now currently are working. So I'd like to see a move be made. But maybe more practically speaking, I'm trying to rush it a little bit here. Maybe more practically speaking is to go down to a second tier guy, a bench guy that can actually deliver a real spark. You know, we're maybe we're looking for the next Lou Williams kind of thing, right? Yeah. right? A six man that can just come out off the bench and actually shoot the lights out consistently. So um, I love, man, that you brought in a couple of interesting trades. Uh, I definitely think it's uh, it's food for thought. About thirty seconds left here. Reasonably speaking, what do you think is going to happen on Thursday? Will there be a trade, or will the Raptors team be the exact same come trade deadline? I think there will be a small trade, maybe for second-tier shooter off the bench, something like a consistent CJ, if that could happen. But what also scares me more about Kyle Lowry is that source is coming out with him knowing about what's happening with Memphis. I feel like that there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Oh, absolutely. But you know what? Which you can't. Scary. Yeah, I can't be too concerned about that because, no. I mean, yeah. Milwaukee, I mean, everybody knows that Milwaukee's offering up everybody besides Giannis. Uh, the Lakers offered literally everybody except yeah. LeBron. Uh, it's happening around the league. Teams are, you know, GMs are going to make the big push and players are going to become aware of it. So yeah, I'd be more concerned if oh, it's yeah. for, you know, an unrealistic trade. But it's certainly something to consider. All right, Evan Sweet from Nova Scotia. You think that a trade will happen on December, or sorry, on this Thursday? I'm hoping that you're right. I'm hoping that something happens. I want to see a little shakeup in the roster. But uh, you know what? Thanks for being a fan, man, and definitely stay in touch with the Raptors Digest and uh, you know contact us as much as possible whenever you have a cool trade idea. Yeah, will. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks, man. Bye. Bye. All right, we're extremely long here, uh, 33 minutes, but it's pretty cool. Um, we'll cut it down to three three people today um very interesting way to record the audio so we're gonna think of if you guys find it interesting if you guys want to call in we'll do it you know maybe every now and then um like i said bringing text to voice becoming more connected with you guys it is interesting to hear your takes and uh it's interesting this time of year this thursday something radically changing could happen for the Toronto Raptors or nothing at all could happen and uh, perhaps they could just really tighten the screws and uh, get the chemistry set in get the guys coming back that have been injured for a while Um, but right now it's a big mystery and in two days it's uh, you know it's it's our Christmas for sure Uh, Ben and I we are very excited for this time of year uh, especially now that the Raptors uh, are poised 
you know, to actually have pieces to bargain with. So will something happen? Will it not happen? If you've made it this far, that's pretty cool. Um, if you haven't, then, um, well, then I'm not talking to you, I guess. Uh, I'm only talking to the people that have actually made it this far. But you guys are the best for listening. Follow the Instagram, the Twitter, all that cool stuff. Um, reach out to us over any of those platforms, and we'll get back to you. So Thursday, what's going to happen? I don't know. I'm excited for it, though. Cheers.